sunset on my uh, bench for a year and a half, and then this a couple months ago I decided to finish this guy. So, yeah. oh, and the other thing, I I always you know mine have keels, and I make these little tray things, and then I jam paper towels in there, and it holds it tight. And this is the best way for me to paint because I always have it on my lap, and I'm not getting anything wet anywhere. It's just a really nice way to paint. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a working decoy, so I didn't do too much detail. Acrylic or oil? Oil. And I also did this kind of wet blending with to, to kind of fuzz it up the edges. You can you see it's that, that was that. So I'll put it with my even though I don't get many barrels in Minnesota, I thought it would look kind of cool. Yeah. Blended that up your hands are you probably the oldest guy around here. I couldn't bring any new things, so I was looking at the bottom of these, and they were 2009, 2010, and I was in Florida working on at the time. I started off with songbirds in in uh, Florida, and I, uh, my teacher headed back to Canada, so I had to shift over to do a character carving, which is another guy that was from. Uh, Canada, down in Naples, Florida. These are kind of fun projects. They're all made out of basswood pieces. Uh, this is the orchestra conductor here. Here's the orchestra conductor. Got so excited his pants dropped down, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a real oh, winner. All my friends that were golfers wanted this because it was, how did you get that golf ball in there? Well, you guys would know that. You can just soak the wood and it's soft and you push it through. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was a real winner for a lot of, a lot of golf events <laughs> starting right now. But uh, it's, it's been a fun project and I'm working on some of these others, but I took my lake home, so I don't have any with me here today. You? I don't know if I can that golf ball off. Watch it. Drink it. Drink it. I don't want it to stand. <laughs> I've got uh, a couple of fish I had up in Perm at the contest. This is uh, Atlantic Salmon. And then I did a uh, red turnstone. And I carved the base. The shell is made out of pine. Uh, the bird is uh, uh, cedar. And uh, the fish are made out of uh, white pine. And they're all painted with acrylic. He's two. I got to meet him a couple couple weeks ago. He was in town, so carved or cut this out so him he could see me carve a little bit on it and then finish it up this week. Uh, basswood body, basswood head, and it's hollow. When I've done it in the past, I kept them solid. They didn't float. But once I hollowed it out, it closed pretty well. Looks like we're over. Well, I'm all for oversized hunting decoys, but I'm trying to get back to normal size ducks. So the first thing I did on this can oversized head, oversized neck, and oversized body. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to follow my principles. <laughs> but we uh, carved out a cupolo and uh, oil paint. Kind of like those days in the spring. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful right now. If you, you know, I've got a shovel by the house. I don't know what Oh, yeah, the birds that are coming through now. Something out, you know. I made a pair of. Black stores, ten and a break, um, to kind of jump on what Bruce was saying. These are slightly larger than life size, and the guy that asked me for them rejected them because he said they're not life sized. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking super magnums, like swan size or loon sized rather. Um, mm. They weren't big enough. They're not big enough. He wanted them the size of like a loon. I'm not going to make them for them anymore. So <laughs> I have a nice pair of search orders for my own rig that will 
be the only ones that are ever hunted in Minnesota. But <laughs> kind of look like coots. Uh, <laughs> uh, I kind of decided also that if you ever have a brand new carver who's unsure about paint, that score is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Two the other one on the nose, and you're good to go. Two dollars. Uh, she was a little bit more of a challenge because if you look on the internet for pictures of sea duck hens, they just look like ducks that have been tumbled through a dryer, <laughs> and the feathers are all poking in 17 different directions, and they have no real color scheme to them. So it just kind of made it up as I went. He said they were too big? Too little. Small. Too little. Too, too, little. Little. too small. Because really? I've made life size decoys if you want to. Tell, why don't you tell them the year they'll grow up? Yeah. <laughs> water. Nice. Put them in the water while yeah. they yeah. swell up. Yeah, eat them. Yeah. Give them some corn. <laughs> we had a, a, a draped green wing teal. So made it out of cupola. And uh, one of the things I did when I painted this, I was um, following that Keith Mueller, you know, that big. Got that big sheet with all the color mixing. A couple of articles in Wildfall Carving Magazine. Yeah. So I actually didn't use any tube, burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, raw umber, or anything like that. So, like the head, I mixed that. Um, it's a combination of one of the yellows, like cadmium yellow, medium, or deep, and then um, purple or um, crimson. It's just, you can do, so I was trying to do the warm colors and the cool colors. So I was messing around with that a little bit. And then those are the same colors that I used for the, the back of the bird also, and then also under the rump here. Um, so it was kind of fun. It was just something different. I wanted to try that without using any, any of the two browns. So. Foil or acrylic? Uh, acrylic. And it's one piece, like carved it, you know, one piece of two foil. Hmm. Is it hollow? No. Okay. no. I had to do some modification on the bottom to make it float with some a weight and some coring on the bottom. So mm -hmm. I've tried. Cutting off the piece, but then I can read that seal looking really good. So, this is a Catherine goose, like a miniature Canada goose. Um, Tupelo hollow with the pine base board, and just done in oils. It was done for a Keith Mueller class that I did. In Michigan? Don, was that in Michigan? Were you in Michigan or taking a class in Michigan? Well, actually, it was remote because of the pandemic. It was like 2020 was when the class was, and we finally finished it like last week. It took me forever to paint all those little <laughs> That's great, yeah. <laughs> That's really good. That good, yeah. Did you paint that in acrylic, you say? Uh, it's oil. oil. Usually it's in Michigan. I guess mine's in Michigan. Nope. Oops, you can't get out of Well, I thought uh, Morty was going to be here today. I guess I kind of why this stuff made the second appearance here, but uh, White's here. I think I made this about a year ago. And uh, last month, Doug uh, had a cutty boy. And of course, I've been looking at some articles lately and I thought, Gee, how can I make a cutting board relevant to carving ducks? Well, I thought, well, sooner or later you shoot them, you cook them, you got to cut them up, right? Sure. So I think it, it, it's okay to do that then. But anyway, uh, so I made it out of uh, cherry, walnut, and uh, maple. Could you hold that up a little bit, Rich? Yeah. Thank you. I'm That's my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to get a TV screen. Oh, I can hear yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. As I was gluing this, there are a couple blocks that are not in the right sequence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the glue was drying and I was in a hurry. <laughs> I didn't realize until the second day I thought, oh jeez. <laughs> but anyway, it's a talking piece. Hold it up uh, again, we'll see if we can guess. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, one trick, I don't know if you guys uh, do a lot of woodwork or not, but uh, you know, when you're dealing with all the stuff with glue quick, you want to stick to your table or what, how do you, how do you, you know, put that glue in there, bro? Sticking every damn thing, right? So uh, <clears throat> I covered another piece of, you know, good flat plywood with uh, packaging tape. 
And for some reason, the glue doesn't stick to packaging tape. So the next morning, you pop it off, and you don't have to, you know, scrape it all off and run to the planer again. So if you ever get into that situation, it works pretty well. Well, I didn't bring anything new, <coughs> but I found this a few years ago and picked it up. Uh, that is the latest decoy I've ever had in my hand. Right? The balsa? That, yeah, yeah, the balsa. Uh, it's got possible 1940. Not sure of the name yet, but I thought I'd bring it down to see if Doug had any ideas on it or anything like that. It's well made. Not necessarily well painted, but uh, it is original and really light. Yeah, yeah. Super light. Go ahead and pass it around. And no DBs in it yet. No DBs. <laughs> okay, no, it's like a dog bit. chew on the nose. Got hit here on the way, but it might be. Yeah. That's <laughs> Whoa. God, it's amazing. Get you right in the nose when you pick it up. Take a lot of wind to move that decoy around. Yeah, it's gotta be, no. <laughs> it's got to be hollow ball side. I bet. <laughs> be that no, light. It's amazing. I think it's hollow. There's no. You can tap it. It's solid. Seems like, we'll take uh, like a sharp break. Stuff to set up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>